Looking to manage Manchester United in FM 2020 and try and do a better job than Solskjaer's doing at the moment? Fear not. This is my Football Manager 2020 team guide for Manchester United. What I'd suggest to do in Manchester United to make them better and maybe start to return them to the glory days. We're going to look at some of the new features in the game, the club vision, the development centre, as well as looking at the dynamics, the transfers in and out, just to get familiar with the squad, as well as the formation I'd pick for Manchester United, and some transfer suggestions that you might want to make. Now, to be fair, on paper, Man United have got a pretty decent squad. They've got some youngsters flowing into the squad. They've got a fair bit of dead wood, really, when you look at it, but some solid players sitting in there, and certainly a good first eleven, which really highlights the need um, for a little bit more depth in the Manchester United squad, but a really poor start to the Premier League season for them, so hopefully you won't be making that poor start that Solskjaer has made with the club. But I think first off, let's have a quick look at the club vision. So what do the club want you to do in the first five years? Well, first off, uh, they want you to increase commercial revenue and work within the wage budget. Those two are Fairly simple things, really. Uh, play entertaining football on an important scale of, uh, of one to four. That is a three out of four. So that's pretty much a desired thing that the club would really like. But if you are a, a, a manager like Mourinho was, that likes to play defensive football, it's not a massive problem as long as it gets results. Uh, and the club also requires you to develop players using the club's youth system, which it already has done with one or two players, which is great. Now, the most important thing is the league, arguably, which it is. And uh, the club want you to qualify for the Champions League, and that is a requirement. So you've got to be at least two of the top big six. Uh, of course, this season you've got clubs like Leicester are also challenging that as well. So you've got to finish third or fourth. I think Liverpool and Man City on pretty much every save are going to be first and second. Unless you can do better with Man United, of course. Uh, but you've got to get in the top four or else you're pretty much going to get the sack. Now, other competitions aren't so important. They'd like you to reach the semi-final and the final of the FA Cup and the Europa Cup, or the Europa League, as it's actually called. Um, but those are only preferred uh, objectives. So if you don't get there, as long as you do well in the league, that's not too important. And they're not fussed as well about the Carabao Cup. But at the end of next season, uh, they would like you to challenge for the Premier League title. And then, in four years' time, win the Premier League title. So that's an interesting thing. A good, uh, sort of, acceptable, uh, sort of, objective in my opinion i've done a liverpool and man city team guide and, and it's pretty tough some of the stuff they've got but uh, man united i think a little bit more realistic for what they can do uh, so let's look next at the transfers in and out now only a few players in for man united this year but they have spent quite a bit of money on them now there's three big signings first one being harry Maguire for 80 million pound replacing virgil van dijk has been the most expensive central defender in the world very solid player 26 years of age he's had only two years at Leicester amazing to think really uh, but yeah Leicester made quite a bit of money on him but uh, a very good signing for Manchester United he's really their main uh, centre-back now alongside Derek Bailly and Victor Lindelof uh, we've also got Aaron Wan-Bissaka who's joined the club personally I think they overpaid for Wan-Bissaka but he's not done too badly so far 45 million he's cost the Reds and uh, very young player 21 years of age so 10-15 years you'll get out of him but uh, see how he gets on, and should be interesting. You've got Diego Dallo as well, who's a youngish player uh, who plays on that side. So looking good in the right back area, and a player that was signed for 15 million, I didn't really approve of, but seems to be the big, good, really the best player for Manchester United at the moment is Daniel James. Quite a versatile player, can play on either wing, and has some sort of versatility up front. But he's only competent at that. But of course, only 21, he can be retrained there. And um, but a good sign. A few more players bought in as well. But quite a few players have gone out. Lukaku being the big one, of course. Matteo Darmian, Ander Herrera and other players like James Wilson, Valencia left as well, as well of course, as well as uh, Chris Smalling and Sanchez going out on loan. So the squad at the moment looks like this. If we look at the tactics, this is the tactic I would use for Manchester United, a 4-1-4-1 wide. A, a, a good tactic for most teams now, just to make sure you've got that defensive cover, um, but also some good attacking players. Now, the squad on paper doesn't look too great, particularly at the back. You've got Maguire and Twanza Bay at the back. Um, we have got centre-backs on the bench, the likes of Phil Jones, Marcus Rojo. But at the start of the game, Eric Bailly is injured, which is a bit of a problem. But ordinarily, Eric Bailly would be alongside um, Harry Maguire, in my opinion. Let's just have a look. Yeah, he's three stars, and yeah, he would be there alongside Harry Maguire. But it's going to be Axel Twanza Bay at the moment. Now, personally, this is a big player that needs to go. Phil Jones. I mean, realistically, he's not going to be used, and he's worth 22.5 million. 
get rid of him. You might as well get rid of him. He's a good player, um, but just never filled his attention. I think, I think he ought to go. And, of course, you've got other players, the likes of Juan Mata. Um, potentially, Rojo's going to be going in the next few years. And, of course, Ashley Young as well. So those are players who have got to be managed and their leaving's got to be managed as well. It brings me on to the dynamics of this team. Um, you have got Ashley Young, one of those players I've just mentioned, being one of the team leaders. So if he's going to depart at the end of the season for you, you need to make sure that that's a nice, smooth transition. Uh, because, of course, he is now the team captain. So that is quite a crucial bit. In terms of social groups, he is in the, is he in the main social group. No, he's in the secondary social group, which is interesting. But it, it is important... As you say, that uh, if he retires to, we should be able to cope. But having three team leaders, it only it, it only improves things really. But uh, you should be all right with Ashley Young again. I don't really think he should be expecting to be playing in the first team. As you can see, he's a squad player, so more of a rotational player. So that shouldn't be much of a problem. But in terms of dynamics, De Gea, Pogba, and Young are the ones to keep happy um, with Rashford matter. And these players in the highly influential area uh, also being important in terms of influential players. Yep, yeah, that looks like absolutely fine to me um so i was on about transfers wasn't i I was saying that you might have to bring a few players in for squad depth and i've picked out one or two players you might want to bring in for squad depth we've got quite a few young some we've got mason greenwood who's only 17 and he's a breakthrough prospect we've got daniel james uh, we've got a few other players of course the likes of scott mctominay that still hasn't reached his full potential and of course we've got axel twanzebe and timothy fossu mensah as well um, but in terms of a few rotational options, I've looked at a few players. Of course, you don't have to sign these, but I've just looked at a few players with a few minutes I've had just to have a quick look. Uh, and I've picked out three players. We've picked out Daniel Rugani from Juventus. He's 25 years of age, 13 million. He shouldn't cost too much, I wouldn't have thought. Um, but a solid player at 25 years of age. He's had plenty of experience for Juventus, even though they're called Zebra in game, because I think Juventus is exclusive to FIFA or Pez. can't remember which one it is. Uh, this year, but uh, Regani will be a decent signing, uh, just a bit of solid protection at centre-back, and because he's only a squad player, I can't imagine Juventus uh, needing too much for him. Now, from the same club, this is a realistic one as well, Mario Mandzukic, he's an impact sub for Juventus, and I think he'd be looking to move on, maybe to Manchester United, he might cost big money, but is it worth it in the end? I would say so, I think you've got him, and then of course you've got uh, Martial, and uh, Rashford are your only two strikers. So I think you need a bit of uh, a bit of striking prowess. And I think Manzouk could be a solid man uh, to do it up there. A little bit like a, a, an, Abr a, a, an Abramovic, I was going to say. An Ibrahimovic figure uh, up front. So I think it would be a good sign as well. And maybe at left back when Ashley Lung Young leaves. Maybe someone like Jordan Lukaku. Not too expensive, um, but still a decent player um, in himself. Now, one of the most important objectives was about the club vision being developing players using the club's youth system, which makes this screen very important. Just keep watching this screen to have a look at the ones to watch. As you can see, a lot of these players here, star players, star players, star players. So keep them nurtured. Make sure they're either going out on loan to clubs or playing in the youth team and getting good experience, maybe being coached um, by other players in the team. Now, I've only just got Football Manager 2020, so I'm going to have to remember how to do this, but... Uh, after a while, you can, of course, get the players to, to train with uh, with other players. Ah, here we go. I think if you go on training... Uh, is it on here? I forgot. But uh, I'm sure after a while, bear in mind I've only started the game. Um, but if you go on training after a few weeks, you should be able to uh, get the player to be tutored, for example, by other players. And that sometimes helps. Sometimes doesn't help so much. Um, but yeah, just finally, in terms of tactics, just a little bit going over it. I would go with that tactic of 4 one 4 one uh, It looks fairly solid. But there is still room for manoeuvre with Manchester United but just getting solid results um, I think is the main thing with this team because they've got a good team not a perfect team but certainly something to build on but they've got some good individuals and therefore that can be built into a very nice team but that's about it really folks I've got for this team guide if you guys have got any questions any queries about Manchester United or FM20 in general leave them down in the comments if you guys have got any thoughts anything you want to add to the contribution uh, one, if anything you want to add to the contribution anything you want to add to the discussion I mean leave that down in the comments and have a good conversation between yourselves on what you think Manchester United ought to do in game to improve and go back to the third year because they haven't really recovered from that ever have they in person as a Liverpool fan I don't hope they do um, but hopefully uh, you guys have enjoyed that and got some value out of it. There's going to be a team guide for every single Premier League club. Of course, if you're watching this in the vicinity of the FM20 beta being out, be patient. Uh, you will get your club if Manchester United isn't your club um, in the near future. I am working on getting all of these done. And I'm also doing an FM20 beta save with Liverpool. So you can check all that out over on the channel. Subscribe if you're new. 
uh, like if you enjoyed as well and comment if you have anything to contribute to the discussion. But thank you very much for watching, folks. I've been TIJ Gaming. I've been TIJ Gaming. And until the next one, I will see you guys later on. Goodbye for now.